you're on. Alright, Tommy Chadburn from Doncaster, training Sheffield at Ryan Rose Gym, a professional boxer, 4 0 as a pro. Uh, I'm fighting next to the 6th of October, Barnes of the Metrodome. So if you need tickets, just get in contact with me, I've got plenty going. So I'd appreciate your support. Every ticket matters to me, so we can't get nowhere in this boxing game. Box at home without tickets, so I appreciate your support. <sighs> so, Tommy, your nickname? Supersonic. Where'd that come from? from? Uh, my dad's got a shop called Supersonic, Hydroponic. So, I just got, they were the first sponsors when my dad sponsored me, so I just took it from there. Plus, me being from Currysbury, my idol growing up was Steffi Ball. He was called Supersonic as well, so it's sort of like pinched off him now he's retired. Okay, okay. So tell us a bit about how you got into boxing. Boxing, uh, started out at Tom Hill, amateur boxing club down Denby, Maine, village side of mine. Just went down there because my best friend Matthew O'Neill for the time, his dad was a trainer down there, so it was something to do. And then you just went from there really. Then I went through a keynote Edgar game with amateurs and whatever. Yeah. So I ended up turning into a licensed boxing. I had fought in licensed fights. And then they come to a stage where there were no no further I could have gone with that. So I signed professional with Steve Slaney as my trainer and Glyn Rhodes as my manager. And obviously as time's gone on we've moved gyms and what have you. And a little stint with Steffi Bull, I'd fight with him. And then uh, I've come with Ryan, signed with Dennis Hobson. I mean I think we've got another year or so left on the contract with him. I've been with Dennis 18 months. And I'm happy where I am here. I'm working five minutes up road up at Ecclesfield, so but five years work up there, so everything's perfect for me. As it is, uh, I'm too weak into my camp now. My weight's flying off. So I'll get down to, uh, I think I've got to wait at 8, 12 yeah. for this next one, but Bantam Weight's going to be my future. Let's not talk about unlicensed boxing because you've had 40 odd fights yeah. in it. There's a lot of sort of dark, negative stuff talked about unlicensed boxing. Yeah, it's, uh, you get mismatched a lot, to be fair. When you I boxed away from here, I was managing my sense sort of thing. Yeah. I had a few fights, got recognised. Then they, they offered me fights here and there, and I just took them. Took them out boxing three times a week once. Yeah. But it paid for me Christmas and my missus' Christmas at the time. So yeah. That was the main thing for me. I was looking to get into me, into my own house and whatever. So I moved out. I was 20 year old, mm -hmm. 19 year old. So that was way of paying bills as well. If so I weren't working. So for you, unlicensed boxing for you was a was a, a, a doorway for you to get to where you are today. Yeah, but it, that's how it ended up being there. Is it safe? I mean, I hear a lot of people say unlicensed boxing ain't safe. There's it paramedics and whatever there, but I think what they do is they do fill up, fill the bar with weight a bit. So I can then go to Birmingham once. I, come, I went out to the ring first and then the kid come out. I'm looking at him and thinking, he's not my weight. No chance of he my weight. And he turned out to a nearly 12 stone kid. And I weighed in at 10. Just over 10 stone, because I walk about at about 10 stone um, back then. And I, I fought him like, and then I ended up getting stopped in second or something like that. But it was a payday for me, and it didn't matter, so I didn't care. It was all about money for me then. So, would you prefer to have an, a, a decorated amateur career, maybe? And, and or, do, or do you think you made? I don't like this? amateur boxing whatsoever. Okay, explain. And, um, it's like when you get caught with a shot, the stand jumping straight in, referee jumping, you're standing eight counts, and yeah. it's not for me. I can remember watching um, Liam Cameron boxing Tommy Langford, and he stopped Tommy Langford. And Tommy Langford got three or four standing eight counts, and it was all his head going back, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I, I, could, I, I want to talk referee and me if, that, if he kept stopping me for standing eight, like that. Because mm -hmm. I'm not the best defensive boxer in the world, as you can tell, tell yeah. me my face like and the way I speak, but if I had referee jumping in every two minutes, it, it won't. Uh, it, it's, not, it's my style to maybe take a shot yeah. and to land one sometimes. And uh, that had just made in that. So amateur boxing, I didn't even go and watch amateur boxing because it just didn't interest me. Okay. I've often spoken, people have heard me talk about fighters with a lack of defence or defensively yeah. irresponsible. Mm. So people would give it to me and say, oh, well, you are. You're, fighting, you're talking to a guy now who's defensively irresponsible in your terms, Ingram. So talk to me about being, on your side of the fence, a fighter that defence isn't number one for you. Why do you take up that approach when boxing is hit and not get hit? Because I'm not most skillful of boxers. It's right. Plain and simple as that. So you're just honest with I yourself? Guess, I guess, yeah. I'm not, I'm not going to be no world champion, I don't know that, but I know I can win a central area title. That's my number one aim, to get a central area. Uh, I know I'm capable of doing that, definitely, especially at my weight. 
I mean, I learned about making super flyweight last year, the yep. uh, year before. Right. But it's just them extra couple of pounds. It just it kills me. Yeah. I mean, I, I get down. I can weigh in at eight, ten up there, so I can make bantam weight. But right. Uh, bantam weight, I'd make it comfortable. An extra couple of pounds, it'd kill me. Right. And I've had all my tests done and everything, and they say it's not it's not gonna be good for you. You'd make it, but you'd be dug up. Right. And I mean, and I put a lot of weight on after weighing. I mean, my last fight I weighed in at eight, ten. I went ring at nine, twelve. It's I put I can rehydrate this and get the right fuel in me. Yeah. To, and beef it and open. There's no, no, not many people at central area level. Definitely not central area. Level, maybe even English level. That'll be as big as me when you get in there. There might be better boxes in there. Yeah. But when it comes to later rounds, I think it it has helped me. Yeah. Because I'm not the most fast fast pacer boxes either. Yeah. I just I like to get stuck in. Yeah. But I'll go in in ints. Yeah. And once I, I try and land big shots as much as I can really, yeah. but. Now I'm with Ryan, I'm, I'm slowly learning how to be a better boxer, yep. but I'm more a fighter than a boxer. So you're under no illusion as to the ability that you're at. What does it take for a fighter to have that sort of honesty? Because there are a lot of fighters that believe that they're actually better than they actually are. You know, bollocks, isn't it? It's, end of the day, I've got a big pair of balls and a big heart, and it's a fighting game at the end of the day. It's not a game of tiddlywinks, is it? Yeah. So if I don't consent to fight when you're in there, there ain't no friends in that ring. You shake hands on that after, but and to, up to the fight, there's no friends in boxing. On the subject of rivals, Tommy Frank. Yeah. A lot of talk about yourself yeah, and Tommy Frank. His name, to be honest. Pardon? I'm fed up with his name, to be honest. Why is that? Well, he's, they had a bit of a laugh and a joke with him and what have you. He's, he's saying things behind me back here and there that I'm hearing little digs and what have you. But if he wants to fight, come to Bantamweight. I'm sure we can make that fight quite comfortable. Dennis is happy to put it on. I'm happy. Ryan's happy. Steve Bailey, his old trainer, is happy. When we'll beat him. Why do you think you beat him? I'll knock him out. Why? Because he ain't got balls and he ain't got heart that I have to go 10 rounds. Simple as that. He don't want to fight me 10 rounds. No chance. So where do you think this all started in the first place then? I think he put uh, something got said on Twitter and I had a little laugh and a joke with him or whatever. And then, uh, when I, I think when I seen him away, you know, and bits and bobs that people said, obviously things might have been said in his ear to wind it up and that. But uh, he, he said something along the lines of, uh, felt embarrassed by me calling him out. I mean, who's he to say that he's a bit above my level? He's, he's not even falling out himself. And so he's boxing tonight, he might be falling out, but he's, uh, he's a good amateur. But he's not a fucking professional fighter yet. So, I mean, uh, the unlicensed game was about fighting, the amateur game about boxing. Uh, end it there. It's a fight game. Let's just get, let's get it on. There's no way, other way of putting it up. Put it back. Let's get it on. So when would you take the fight? When, 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 what? when would you take the fight? When do you accept? I'm, I'm boxing 6th of October. Yeah. So any time after that. Any time I'm ready. I've seen it, Jim. I'll be ready. So what have you seen of Tommy Frank in your opinion? Tommy Frank's a good boxer, uh, but he can't hurt me. No chance in this world is he going to be able to stop me. So simple as that. Let's just see who better man is. If he wants it, come to Bantamweight and we'll see what Beth Man is. So what's the possibility of the fight happening in your mind? How easy is the fight for you? If he make? wants it, it's as simple as that. If he wants it, it can be made. Yeah, simple as that. Dennis Hobson will put it on. Ryan, my trainer, and Steve Bailey, my trainer, they're happy to put it on. I'm more than happy to put it on. See, I don't give a toss about losing or not. I get in there, I'm a fighter, I get in there, I'll fight anybody. I'll give you 110%. Win, lose, or draw. At least I show I've got a bottle to get in there. So let's just, let's just make it happen. So I'll, I'll wish shit and I'll talk and let's not make it happen. So that's it. That's your that's your message yeah. to Tommy Frank. Simple as that. No messing around. If you want it, come and get it. And you've got no, you don't care. Win, lose, no, draw, you're I, fighting. I ain't bothered. And you're not bothered about it. No, him. I ain't bothered. Not one bit. Does this does he stand in the way of your future? He's a bollocks now. He's a super flyweight, really. So he'll be coming up a few pounds. But he, even if we both lose, we can come back from it. Well, early on in his career, haven't we? Yeah. See, I've got a fight in October, so fingers crossed that'll put me 5 and all. He's boxing tonight, that ought to flip him 4 and all. There's not many people about it, flyweight, super flyweight, bantam. So we can make the fight easy enough and we can get it for a central area or an so international match. Do you see as a natural, is that a natural rivalry between yourself and him? Or yeah, is he's, it? A, he's a United fan, isn't he? That's, that's oh. what it all stands for. Oh, and you're, you're Wednesday, man? Yeah, Wednesday, yeah. Ah, yeah. are you actually genuinely a Wednesday supporter? That's how much I'm a Wednesday fan. Right, because I spoke to Sam Sheedy the other day and he said, I don't give a shit. Um, and I'll support Wednesday, even if I'm fighting at Bramwell Lane. Do you feel that way too? I'd love to box at Bramwell Lane, come out to Isle Silver Lining with Wednesday flag behind me, Wednesday pair of Wednesday shorts on. 
Oh, do I mean, very nice. And uh, have you messaged the Sheffield Wednesday supporters? We are Wednesday, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So Tommy, who, who have you, who's, who's been your inspiration um, as a like a pro fighter? Well, is that, it, well no, uh, well, watching. Watching. Jamie Moore was my favourite fighter. It just turns out how Ryan betrayed him. Yeah. Him out. yeah. That was the end of his career, but that devastated me. But yeah. Ryan, when I was mentioning Jamie in interviews and that, that'll be, as soon as he watches this, he'll be on, on me, ripping me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I was a big fan of Jamie Moore's work. It, was, it was style for me, Jamie. He loved to get stuck in, and yep. he's just a fighting man, and he don't win fight it year three times without being any good and been in the The Macklin and, fight. Oh, wow. I must have watched that 100 times. Yeah. 100 times easier. Very easy. What's your take on the international scene um, in terms of, like, see the one uh, Mayweather and Canelo? Uh, well, to be honest, I'm, I'm more of a short, small old show with yeah. of them. I, th- I think it's best value for entertainment you go in like but okay. I'm addicted to boxing me right. so I'm just fascinated with watching all IFL TV interviews I don't miss many interviews at all but as in regards to a big stage and that it's so they get looked after so, so much don't they and then when they know that they've got it and they get a big few quid behind them and whatever you it, uh, it built, they can get the profile built up but now you've got IFL and you've got people like yourself and mm-hmm. that do an interview it gets your name out there it gets you recognised a bit better I mean, like Dave Allen, look at Dave Allen now. Yeah, look at him. He's gone from selling four tickets on a, on a, facing a Bulgarian for yeah. Dennis to fighting on matchroom shows and that, because he, he, he can fight and he's got a gift at Gav, hasn't he? Yep. And he, think, and he says he's a handsome man as well. Yeah, he's not bad looking. <laughs> I, I, I wish I could say the same, but you don't this many scars you, and, you, and you're handsome. So, you say just the area title, or the, or the southern area title, or the English title, would you say that you are shooting yourself a low one standard, step, or, you're just, or you're just being honest with yourself? I'm just being honest with you, one step at a time for me. Obviously, I'm more than capable of winning a Central Area title right. next year or so, definitely. Uh, and then from Central Area, you go into English, don't you? Yeah. But let's see what happens. I'm just going to leave it with Dennis Sobson and, uh, and my trainers, Ryan and Steve. See what they say. Let's talk a little bit about your trainer, Ryan, yeah. and, and about him and his influence on and him, his actual experience as a pro fighter. Yeah fighting for Canelo and all those yeah. fights like that. And then how's that translated to you as a fighter? Has he tried to change your style or? Not really, no. He's just trying to make me stop fighting. Okay. And calm down and pick time, pick punches a bit better, work off my job a bit better. And I mean, I move me, roll and what have you a lot anyway, but just, I'm not, my work rate's not quite there and he'll push me or give me a kick up ass and, yep. and what have you. Because when I'm fit, I'm, I'm, I am fit. But at minute, obviously I'm too weak into camp, I'm still fat, I'm still a stone and a half off away. Yep. It, it comes off, I've got more than enough time to get it off, like, but it's right. about staying at gym for me because I've just gone into party mode before after okay. after my camps and I've just ballooned up again and it's just no good for you. It's, but I wanted to live life now. I've, uh, a lot of things have happened behind scenes of boxing with me in the last 18 months and they're not, not been good things. Right. So uh, I'm just wanting to change my life around now. Uh, it's a second chance for me. Ryan's never lost faith in me. He's always been there. I've always been welcome at his gym. Um, and Ryan believes in me. And he sees what hard work I put in there. And that's where it all stems from. Putting hard work in gym, getting out before I go to work for eight, ten hours, doing the road work, just busting my balls, eating clean. And that's it, really. Just I'm living lifestyle now. And uh, a note about Dennis Hobson. Oh, what a boy. He's the, he's the man, isn't he? I mean, you, you look at the caliber of fighters that he's had like he's had bits of to, and bobs to do with Ricky Atten and look at what he did with Clinton and where have you it's Dennis is a man De- Dennis will, will look after me and it's all about being loyal into it and today I mean my contract's up in a, about a year a year or so time or something so I'll be doing another three year deal with Dennis 100% loyalty what does that mean to you in boxing they say, they say if you want loyalty to get a dog do you believe in that Second, sorry. They say if you want loyalty, to get a dog in boxing. Is that true? De- this is now Dennis is the most loyalist man you could ever wish in boxing. If you be loyal by Dennis, he'll be loyal by you. It's as simple as that with him. He's a straight jumbo man. He'll tell you exactly how it is. He'll tell you if you think you go it stepping to either say you call somebody out or you want to fight somebody, no, you're not ready for him yet, or yeah, we'll take that fight. He's he's got that much experience and he knows the game. He is words final as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. Wow.